part two for microscales. Here are just various uh, forms of, of the heterozygous for scaleless microscale. And uh, here we're looking at a coral glow, lesser microscale. There's a bumblebee microscale. And this thing is, uh, that's, that'd be like a super pastel pinstripe microscale. All right, let's break this down and take a look at one of these snakes. Okay, so what I'm noticing a lot of times with my micro scales is uh, sometimes we have, uh, it's like an, a highlighter. It really starts to accentuate. So this is literally just, you know, a bumblebee. So it's a spider, pastel jungle, micro scale. And uh, I think the yellow's popping a little bit more. The head's a little bit balder. And they're also very uncooperative because I'm blasting this terribly bright light on their heads but I'm really just trying to do this education. You know, I sit here and revel at this, just looking at that soft head. So if I was actually able to, to pet the top of the head, it would feel very, very soft. Okay, so here's a, here's a nice female. This is a lesser coral glow micro scale, and uh, she'll be big enough to breed the season. We could do all sorts of cool things. So I guess maybe even making a, you know, blue-eyed leucistic super micro scale so it'd be a big white scale of snake oh, that could be really really interesting now, i know the scale isn't for everybody but uh as a snake breeder we basically uh tend to we want to stretch our imagination and and basically stretch what we can tolerate with snakes wow <laughs> i am not doing well okay look at you yeah, it's so funny when snakes get an idea in their head. It can be relentless, but tortoises do the same thing. Very nice. Okay, guys. Let's let's look at it in its pure form. All right, so now we're looking at, a, this is a micro scale. Now, a lot of the micro scales, which is really interesting, they almost look like, kind of like, a, uh, not the greatest looking Enchi. They got a lot of banding, they don't have a lot of alien faces, and that's, it's kind of typical, and it, and it definitely appears genetic. So, this animal, you can see, it's just like, it's almost like granulated scalation. So this animal, now this is perfect, that's a great subject. Remember, these are bubblegum videos, so it only cost me about five cents to produce this. I'm the cheapest employee ever. So this is a Coral Glow Microscale Enchi. And uh, yeah, it's not even much different than, if you look at the, the banding, right there compared to there. So the Microscale is definitely adding, adding a bit more to uh, things we're looking at. Go back. Let's take a look at the pastel. Okay, so right there we can definitely see the difference. Look, you can see just a little bit of scalation on basically a scaleless center of the head, and you just see a couple single scales. So that's really cool, you know. And and if this is like this is me just trying to be. Uh, trying to like sit there and excite myself and kind of go through things and consider what I'm you know what the future is and and stuff like that so I generally don't often go the normal way so I don't have anything to do with the normal scaleless head that's everybody else's project I'm just doing this micro scale uh, but I'm definitely sticking to the micro scale that is what I've picked and that's where I think the future is uh, so far I'm, I'm just really I'm optimistic about uh, obviously we, we want to make sure that the super is a functioning healthy animal and uh, the, su the two supers that are right here have fed several times uh, no problems eating I don't see any problems whatsoever so that's good so will that continue I would certainly expect everything looks good I think you have to be a little bit uh, thoughtful when you are raising them so if I took a scaleless snake and I put it into an environment that could literally desiccate 
the animal, let's say when it's time to shed and you know rob the animal of valuable moisture, I think it'd be foolish. So I think some of the considerations I would have for all the scalation, you know, the lack of scalation and the future of these animals is to consider maybe keeping all these animals on paper. Obviously being very smart about your humidity and basically maintaining your proper humidity, which could be, you know, 70% or greater. Uh, but paper, humidity, water dish, hide, and then ultimately feeding maybe defrosted rodents too, because the scales do protect the animal from getting bit. So basically, you know, you turn these animals over to eating defrosted. But uh, these hats are just spot on great. So, hopefully, I, this snake, I, I'm gonna lose. That, that snake's great. <laughs> so the micro scales are, are definitely new. They are only, they've only been around for maybe four years compared to the scaleless heads. So we're just getting a little bit done. Not many people have it. Um, I've kind of liked it that way too, because I want to, you know, basically keep it special. And uh, this coming up year, we'll we'll start getting going. I, I was kind of slow on breeding ball pythons this year. I had a lot of distractions, and I need to, you know, double down. I need to, you know, consider a lot of the different snakes that I'm I'm breeding because I really don't want to make what are you doing make huge numbers for uh, no point. I, I like to make enough to. You know capture and keep my interest I also have enough for people that would want them but I don't want to have you know just every corner of my building is filled with ball pythons because then you know kind of lose a little bit of the, you know appreciation of what they are okay say goodbye to micro scales video number two please let me know if you have any questions uh, thoughts you know we're, I'm just going through all this different stuff and like anybody keeping and breeding reptiles it's a learning curve so what's the future of these? I think it's excellent and it's very smooth. Say goodbye.